Hi everyone, this is Andrew for Poker Savvy Plus, and welcome to part three of my 15 limit session. Uh, this is actually, I think, part six of um, the series Grind on the Mind. This is part three of my 15 limit session, but part six of the series overall, which is cool. Um, this is the third and final part of the uh, six tabling session I did on Poker Stars. I will bring up once again the uh, graph and stats for you. Um, as is customary at the beginning of each one of these videos. Um, so we're, we're kind of around about here, I would say, um, at the moment in um, in this video. I'm not sure, I, I think actually that uh, we've just played this hand, which was the uh, Ace-King hand versus the Jacks, uh, which I played um, sort of reasonably, I guess, reasonably well. So we're somewhere around about here. Um, for those of you who didn't catch the stats at the beginning of... Um, parts one or two, here they are, um, just make sure you can see that. Um, so I'm playing 28-25, again, I'll say it again, I say it every single time, um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with playing tighter, uh, I just kind of default to a reasonably loose style, um, simply because that's what I'm most comfortable with, there's absolutely nothing wrong with playing tight, there's also nothing wrong with playing loose as long as you're doing it well, so don't look at these stats and think that you should definitely be playing uh, as loose as I do or as aggressively as I do. I want you to make it your own game. Don't just try and copy someone else. Uh, so that's uh, that's what's going on uh, for this session. As I say, we're around about here. We'll just pick up where we left off last time, uh, where we have this 7-9 uh, guy on table 5 who decided to get minimum value. I had King, Queen of Diamonds and bricked it out. So uh, I think it was pretty standard for me not to barrel that turn. Um, but yeah, he decided that, I mean, the board didn't come out well for him, but I feel like he definitely could have got, uh, some more value from his hand, definitely. Um, this 10-3 of diamonds, I'd be surprised if I don't raise here, I should be raising, okay. Um, obviously a little bit marginal, but, uh, this guy, Tahomo, is certainly tight enough for me to re-raise, to be raising a very wide selection of hands, because I think I have a great deal of fold equity pre-flop. Um, okay, so the ace-9, relatively standard so far, I'm literally just betting for value. Um, he calls, and it's difficult for him, this is, this is actually, I remember this hand, this is actually kind of an interesting hand. Um, I think the flop bet is obviously fine, uh, you know, there's a lot worse that he can call with any straight draw, any flush draw. Um, and then on the turn, uh, I have a little bit of a decision. I think that betting is okay, but it might be a little bit thin because the hands that I would expect him to value call on the flop, and by value call I mean the hands that I think that he calls because he thinks he has the best hand, are going to be hands like 9-8, um, pocket 10s, obviously better aces, um, hands like 7-6, maybe a hand like pocket 9s, etc. I think that all of those hands fold if I bet again, so I have to kind of evaluate betting versus a new range of hands, a new calling range.